since I uh, I want to remove the uh, cams uh, there is a jig to be installed here in the middle um, and in order to be able to install that jig I need to remove the injectors for cylinder 1 to 4 so I'm gonna have to remove these uh, bolt here this bolt right there with this steel plate and pull up the uh, two injectors same thing here so this one on the far end I don't need um, the ID is uh, this jig is uh, sole purpose is to uh, withhold the cams that have been depressed at the moment so it's gonna relieve stress from the cams so then we can remove all of these screws around on one side we uh, the same principle we start from the outside on each end and alternates going toward the middle that's the ID to uh, proceed with that so right now I'm gonna remove the two cams uh, sorry the two um, bracket with the four first injectors and then I'm gonna install the jig and show you how it's all about uh, how it works the plates holding it is like a like an arc shape shape it's a, a bit like a spring load kind of to make sure to hold them down when you try to remove them you need to uh, grab them by here and you try like to shake it very gentle you try to pull it either the, the two direction sorry you try to apply them the two directions and try to show you maybe with this one a bit so it's somehow you, you take it like that and you try like to shake it gentle like that and you can try gentle like that and like that it's a uh, you take your time you don't want to bang the tip of it the tip is uh, where the magic happens uh, anyway you don't want to bang these per yet but you try uh, you try not to do like one of these moves you know when you you pull you pull you pull and then it go very uh, quickly up and then you bang it down you don't want to do that so take your time and uh, so I'm gonna be uh, removing the three remaining ones and uh, that's what's happening uh, at this moment they're a bit difficult to uh, move around here there's a little tab square tab that uh, kind of uh, prevent the uh, injectors to turn around it's located in between these <coughs> in that notch uh, so it's much easier to rock it that side than that side because of that notch there's this uh, ring here and here these are the rings that uh, seems to be holding uh, them in place because there's no o-ring in the hole so not 100 percent sure but i would say probably 90 95 percent also you want to keep them store in the same order they go in the head i want to reinstall those where they belong so two more to go so we're now back back at uh, trying to remove the third injector that was a problem uh, the longer this sits there it seems like the longer they might get stuck so I needed to buy one of these uh, holder to remove it. So we're gonna try to install that. That's pretty good. I need to remove these uh, tie wraps and uh, this uh, ziplock bag that I put because this pin goes in there and then the puller goes under the it goes here under that bracket here. So this is just to locate it, so it stands it stand straight up. Then there is uh, this uh, slider weight that attached to it. And that should allow us to win this game of pulling it out. So that was a win, a tough one, but that was a win. Now, if we look at all the valves, hold on. If we look at all the valves here, these valves are 
not compressed. You can see these ones are compressed. They're lower than these ones. So these two here, cylinder number two is compressed on the exhaust side. All of those are not compressed all around. So these two need to be supported prior for us to remove the cams. So in order to do that, we use that jig here. These two little uh, fingers are gonna hold the valves. So in order to do so, we need to slide it so slowly like that. Okay. Then we're gonna need to there there. Uh, this jig is gonna be fixed using the holes that are for the head cylinder uh, cover. So we're gonna put the bolts on to fix it in place. So you put first the one with the holes to locate the jig. No, oh, jig is not aligning properly. Mm -hmm. Okay, the fingers here are besides the valve, so I'm gonna try to flip it around and put this here. Maybe it's set for the uh, intake right now. Moving that side of the jig. This is like spring loaded, so it's. I think it is. No, it's not. So you just remove it. Once it's removed, you put it the other side. So. Then you're gonna have to make sure that you line it up the pin with the hole, obviously. Okay, these are stoppers here. These boats, they're used as stoppers. So if it goes too much down, it's gonna prevent you to do so. So if ever it's a problem, uh, we're gonna have to slack those. These are set screws with Allen key here and the lock nut here to squeeze against that uh, surface. So second attempt. Oh, that isn't necessarily that good. seems to line up much better so they were uh, on the wrong side it was uh, set for the intake side yeah, you can tell it's much better already so it's just a matter of you want to put first the uh, ones where there are two holes and then the, the two slots gives you room if for some reason it doesn't line up properly This is not something that's gonna have to use lots of strength. This is just to hold those, so my hand like that is plenty enough. Then it's just a matter of setting it down. Not sure if it's all the way down.
So you can see uh, here, the leg here, at the bottom there's still some space. So it, it shows that it's, uh, I need to adjust the set screw so it can go further down. So this is what I'm going to do. So the way to do so was to slack the two nuts underneath. It's hard to see, but the, the nuts that are uh, underneath the tool. Um. <laughs> so there are the two nuts here. So we slack those. We slack the set screw fully. Then we just go and set it against the valve. So this is now set against the valve. Once this is done, we screw back the set screws in up to the stopper. And then when we, while we hold them in place, we're gonna we're gonna screw back the nut all the way up to lock it. And then the tool is gonna be set the right way. It's easy as this. Maybe I could have torqued this a bit, but I don't think it's needed. The uh, fingers here on the back, they go further down, so it's normal we can see a, a gap. There's a bit of a gap, but it's because there's finger that are going down further back. So that's all. Once this is done, then we're going to be good to remove the, uh, the disc cam. Okay, so now we're going to remove this uh, aluminum uh, block here. This is what, hold the, what holds down the camshaft. This is the exhaust cam. So in order to proceed, we have to remove the uh, bolts from outward toward the inward. So we need to start here with uh, these two caps. Then we're going to do these two at the end and so on, back and forth every side till we reach the end. We can do so because this thing here, this jig is holding down the two... Um, valves down so it's not going to give any stress to the cam as we're going to remove those in order to remove those uh, since the ratchet head is too big to go to go in there so we're going to use this uh, wrench ratchet here with the adapter to go to 3 8 of an inch this is small enough so it, get, it can go through this is a socket the e10 so we just go right here and then we can okay it's a bit tough so we're gonna put an extension to it so we need leverage so we're just gonna have leverage just use it like that inside of the key There seems also to be this uh, third bolt here that's gonna have to be removed as well because it, it goes along with it. So and then keep going the same thing. The other one we're gonna be able to take the ratchet. So these bolts are a bit long to be taken out with the jig on. There's no way we're gonna remove that jig. So we're gonna try to lift this upper part above the split and go along with the bolts. This is the plan. So we're gonna try that right now to see if it's gonna go right. We, the, all the bolts are loose so we can by pinching the bolt it gives grip to remove this thing as you can see here to work let's try 
start with the bolt first. Oh, it's not. <laughs> okay. Obviously, this is uh, going through it. There's no, <laughs> there's no way I can go out with it. That can be removed now because this is holding the uh, cam. And if the cam is going to turn after that, it's not any important because it's it's free. So I, I just forgot to remove these. Obviously, these two Allen key here to be able to remove the jig that goes inside. Remember the one that goes right inside here that locks with the cam. So we just need to remove these two bolts on top here. This is what I'm doing right now. So take two, that should work better. I'm just gonna put this over here. Okay, so now we can see the cam here. We can see it's, it doesn't seem so bad or so wrong. Um, now the next step is just to lift it up, which I'm going to do right now. Cam should be free to go. We don't want to bang it. In fact, I think I can go along with this, this part, yeah. Just like that. This is the best way to do so. I'm going to go this way. So it's not so hard to figure out the way they go, right? Because this big part here. This big part here is the front end because it, it's uh, a bit sophisticated because you got the channel for the vanas. I'm gonna have to remove all the rocker, put them in, a, in the right place. Yeah, I see lines there. I don't like the lines there. So anyway, I'm gonna be able now to re release this uh, tool here with a wrench. So it's gonna remove release these two valves slowly. So after that, I can remove all the rocker. The idea is to be able to reach the valves because we're going to have to remove the valves to because I want to change these uh, valve seals. Also to look under the under the uh, cylinder head to make sure that there's nothing uh, wrong, like the um, fit of the valve within the guide hole and stuff like that. So keep going with this. Okay, so to remove the uh, rockers, it's uh, quite easy. It's just, in fact, there's a clip in there, but we don't want to, we don't want to take it off the clamp. So it's just a matter of go gentle. And there's a, a pin that slides. It's a bit snug with the oil, so it's kind of uh, fit in there. There's a, you can see there's a, a metal uh, pin that clips it. There's no need to remove all of that, so we just keep it like that. We're going to put them in the right order so we know where they belong, so we put them back in the right spot. So I'm going to remove all of those and then release this uh, nut here to release the... To, well, this is where I am actually. I need to slack this, uh, this one here. So by gently removing it, the two springs here are going back up we're going to release those you can see it's going up removing the load on the 
but these things are two valves because there's no need now because the this was to prevent the cam to go uh, weird or bent or crack or anything so now it's all free this is loose so I'm gonna the next step with that jig is gonna be to remove it completely and then install it on that hand so it's gonna hold these two here because if you look carefully let me grab a screwdriver and show you if you look carefully these valve here are fully high all of those are high you can see this one is deeper the, these two here are deeper than these all the remainings so it's this is why we don't have to remove the jig it's, uh, maybe we will have to slack it or something if the two fingers are not going to be able to to go into the place because of uh, when we have to screw it there so it's possible I'm going to have to release the thumbs here to just put it there I think this is what's going to happen actually Slack those here. It's just a matter of screwing it back. it reach the locating pin here okay then we put it back on then we just need to put back the thumb screws in there This one here we just pick up the slack there's no need to torque it so now it's 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 uh, pick up the slack so it's it's uh, just above the two valves here it pushes on here in between the two the two walls kind of here so it, it holding it's holding the two valves down when they when we're gonna release the cam it's gonna hold it in place so now I'm going to be able also to remove that, but first I want to keep going on with the rocker. I need to find room to put them in the right place, knowing which cam they belong to. I'm not going to forget this time to remove this uh, this jig here that goes right in, in the hole to hold the cam. Because since this is there, um, well, I'm going to slack the bolt first prior to remove it, just like I did before. But prior to taking it off, I'm going to remove that. So this is what's going on and uh, after that I'm going to have to remove the three injectors since I'm going to play around with the head uh, it's better to remove them than to take any chances to break them apart especially now that I have a puller to take them out I'm just going to remove them I need to remove the bracket on this one because this one has not been removed yet so then the hopper part is going to be all removed the only thing that's going to remain is the valve and the spring as you can see here <coughs> so then we're going to remove all of the valve and uh, check uh, them afterward. Okay, so on the uh, gearbox side, this is the uh, injector hole. I realized looking at all the holes that there was something special. If you look, there was this thing that was stuck in the hole. Took a pick to remove it. Then I realized there's also like a ring there that is stuck. Maybe this is explaining why this one was so hard to get out. So I'm going to have to check on the injector, making sure it didn't broke or something. Uh, the other holes are just fine. They don't have any of that crap. 
it's really just this one on the transmission side that uh, has that thing so now I'm working on trying to insert the pick here to remove this ring <coughs> so I just thought I would show it to you You can see the kind of crap that is there. It's kind of uh, yeah. Kind of, uh, it's kind of some dust. I'm gonna scratch it to remove all of that crap. And here is the uh, ring. That's the ring that was with it. And the other one is, uh, looks almost like, like a coil kind of crap. That was on top of it. So removing the uh, intake, uh, cam was uh, same process as the exhaust nothing really special the last uh, injector on the uh, transmission side that was a very tough one to take out even with the polar polar suffer from it so now i'm going to remove the uh, cap of the oil filter to uh, and got to put the drip pan underneath just to make sure there is no uh, oil that's going to leak and then it's a matter of removing the house uh, the housing of the oil filter so there's one bolt here there's another one here and there's another one right here so it looks to be three bolts if anything more than that i'll let you know so removing the oil filter you need uh, one of these or you can use some uh, rubber strap but that works very fine Oops, and I have to hold it Yeah, so it's going to be a good thing to empty that prior to release it. So we need to remove that one here at the bottom, on the pulley side. And then, and then this one here. You can tell they're different size. And that should be the last one to be removed. Yeah, you can tell the whole thing is shifting.
Yeah, so it's the last one here to be removed. Then the hose is gonna leak through the hole in the middle. So we gotta be careful that it's gonna drip in the pan. So the longer boat was the one going up. And the two others well you saw where they were going. The uh, you can if you have oil and um, coolant that are, is mixing, it's it's probably either that gasket here that is for the housing, or there's another one. There is a flange up front. Uh, it's hard to see like that, but so it's hard to see. But you have here the um, this is looking from underneath. This is the well all those because this is the flange that goes on the side of the. Um, cylinder head this here there's a flange these are the two hose that goes to the uh, oil cooler so the flange here there's a seal also and there is a dead end of coolant that collects with that connects with it it's really just like a cap to seal it there is it's not connecting to anything but if this seal is bad it's also can bypass from one to another oil and coolant so now this has been removed um, now it's going to be time to figure out a way to set the uh, cylinder head so I can remove the uh, valve one by one. So if we look at the valve, it is uh, it is very nasty in there. That's going to need some cleanup, obviously. If we look at the exhaust side, it's much cleaner. It's dark, but it's not as uh, gross and wet as the other side. So it's uh, still it's good to be. It's going to be a good thing to clean it, but it's much much better. In order to uh, clean the uh, intake side, I put some gunk in the. Uh, I put the head uh, sideways with a wood block in between the studs on the intake side. Uh, exhaust side sorry and uh, fill uh, the cavities with the gunk since there's no cam anymore the valves are closed gonna have to let that thing work for uh, for 24 hours maybe slightly more so and then it should be easier to remove that for, uh, with the uh, with the uh, like an old toothbrush or something. Stabilized it on the back with a piece of a two by four. So make sure that the, it's not gonna fall. And uh, one end of it, the timing chain size gotta be hanging because it's uh, too wide. So what I did is uh, I used these uh, brand new turkey uh, uh, to pull up the juice on the turkey and put it. And, uh, this one is not for turkey, it's for the, uh, the grossness of that engine. So I suck out the uh, gunk and I dumped it in this uh, water bottle. That's going to be a recycle, recycling uh, container for it. So once I suck it up and I put it in there, I just use a toothbrush and just try to clean. It's quite, a, it's quite easy to take it out because it's been... Um, it's been uh, sitting there for about two, three days now. So I don't know if you can see, but when you brush it, it, it becomes lighter. It's still gross because the juice is black. Like if you look this one here, this one doesn't have to be, didn't have been brushed yet. So you can see there is a solid debris. So you can see when we didn't brush it, there's some uh, grossness, but when you brush it, it goes away very quickly. It still get stays black. But it's uh, it's hard to show you, but yeah, you can see one once it's brushed, it goes away like here. You can see the metal a bit. We can see here I use the rag afterward. Now look at this one, see now I'm going to just use the rag, see how clean it gets with the rag, makes a big difference. So once you brush, just use a rag and just clean the black. 
Okay, so we're gonna re uh, remove the uh, intake valve. It's gonna leak a bit on the other side because there's still a bit of uh, the gunk in there, but the, uh, I'm gonna put a rag as I'm gonna open it to just uh, absorb the uh, gunk. So the valves are very, very small on this uh, N54 engine. It's quite impressive. It looks Fisher Price, but this is actually the right one to fit on the uh, egg, uh, intake spring. Uh, on the valve, I'm gonna put a washer because I don't want to mark it with this uh, I don't want to mark it with this uh, tool because it's a very thin surface so I'm gonna put the uh, the washer like that so it's the washer is gonna push on the uh, valve of course the washers got uh, two edges so we're gonna put the round edge that's gonna face the uh, valve so that's the setup Okay, so when we screw this, we this is releasing the uh, valve uh, clips. These are like cones, two half cones, cone on the outside. It's maybe hard to see, but and inside there is a a little groove. Take it with my hand, it's gonna be easier. If you look at it here, there's a little ridge. This ridge goes in, uh, in there, there's a groove on top of the valve. So when the valve, uh, the spring pushes on the washer, the washer. Uh, this clip gets squeezed with the cone but it stays stuck with the valve because of the ridge in the groove of the valve so this is how we hook the valves okay this is uh, to explain to you how this uh, valve is uh, all the valves are hold and held in place the valves itself got a groove on top the uh, clips there's a uh, it's split in half so there's like two halves the outside of them is a cone and inside there is a ridge that goes inside the groove of the uh, valve. The uh, N54 uh, valves got, uh, I think it's two or three grooves. Doesn't change anything. So the idea is that um, there's a, this is a washer. The washer's got a cone inside of it that matches the clip's uh, cone. And the spring pushes on the washer. So when you push the washer up, it gets the clip to squeeze on the valve and it gets tighter so it holds it better with the uh, the little ridge and groove so this is basically how it works so in order to free the valve you need to compress the spring then you're going to be able to take out these two uh, clips two halves then the whole thing is just going to come up uh, come apart so now that we we compress the spring, we should be able to take out the two of those. So maybe I just need like to push it a bit upward. Yeah, that's what it is. Just bring the tool a bit upward, get the other one there. You can use a, sm a small screwdriver. stuck with the oil. I'll push it with the magnet as well as the screwdriver. Maybe underneath. Okay, I'm gonna have to play a bit with it. The oil keeps it around, so I'm gonna have to take two screwdriver probably. So now we're gonna release this. As we're gonna release it, the uh, 
the spring is gonna become free as well as the washer and then the valve is gonna leak on the other side because it's not gonna get it's gonna stop being pushed against the uh, cylinder head So here is the spring and the washer. I'm going to remove the tool. And then when we're going to push on the valve, it's going to start leaking. that's a success not too much of a, a mess you can see the valve is quite messy some of it should be easy to get out because of the gunk then we're going to be able to brush them against the uh, the grinder with a brush brass brush that should make it uh, perfect so we're just going to repeat this for all of those you can see there's grooves here I should have tried to pay attention which groove it was, but it was on film because it was stuck around because there's three grooves. So that's what it is. Uh, we want to put them in a specific order so we know which cylinder they belong to. So I started here on the... Uh, this is the uh, cylinder 6. It's the uh, gearbox side, transmission side, but uh, it doesn't matter as long as I uh, write it down to make sure that I know where they belong. The valves are not uh, fully clean, they're going to need to be brushed.
So the ID with the uh, paperboard, we made the hole first. We number the cylinder, one, two, three, up to six. There's two holes per cylinder, obviously. High for intake, E for exhaust. So make the hole first because you don't want to, when you punch it with the valve, you don't want it to bounce. bounce. So you just put the spring like that. And you put the keys under the spring so they won't go anywhere. And there's a, another, it's like a lid there so that it stands like that. Now we'll just swap in the hole. Sometimes the, uh, the I would call it the shit that is in there is uh, it's kind of stiff. It's uh, been softened by the gunk, but sometimes it stays there. So you can just take like a screwdriver and gentle. You try to uh, take the uh, puck out of there, but you be careful not to damage too much the surface, especially the angle there. This angle here. This is where the valve sits. That you don't scratch, you don't touch with the screwdriver. The idea is just to take the most of it out, because then it's going to be sent to the to the uh, machine shop. It's very cheap for them to uh, wash it. Can you see this here? You see here, there's a bit of a chunk. Just take gently, it's going out smoothly. Also, there is uh, the two holes where the uh, valves are in. You just take the screwdriver and you just swipe. There's a lot of dirt coming out of there. Um, and then you just look from inside the intake where it goes down to the valve. And sometimes you just need to swipe a bit with the rag and that's all. Okay, so um, uh, flip the uh, head so the exhaust is now upside. Put back the gunk that was uh, that we sucked uh, from the uh, intake side, and we reuse it on the exhaust side. We're gonna let this sink. You gotta make sure to remove the rings. There are some uh, seal like that, like these. Hold on. You gotta make sure you remove the ring gasket on the exhaust manifold kind of uh, side um, the wood uh, the setup is wood again on the both sides there's like two strips uh, when you look on the intake to the pattern of the studs are more in the middle so we cannot put a middle uh, um, wood strip it's not as easy as this uh, here it's uh, more spaced so I had to put a strip of wood on the two edges this is uh, the setup for that one, and uh, so we're gonna let it sink for a few hours, and then we're gonna try to brush it off, uh, suck suck the gunk out, and then try to brush it off with the uh, uh, toothbrush. Okay, so time to remove the uh, <coughs> the uh, valve uh, seals, valve stem. Um, the one on the left is the ex uh, intake side. The one on the right is the intake uh, exhaust side. So intake on the left, exhaust on the uh, exhaust on the right. Uh, use a plier like that. Grab them at the base. It's quite easy to remove. The um, if you look, if you look at them from the top, there is uh, also a color that is different on these they were original for the uh, up ring but uh, when you look from the side you can tell the shape is not exactly the same 
the base is more kind of fat uh, or the top let's say it's thinner on the intake side than it is on the exhaust side They're a bit more difficult to remove on the exhaust side than they are on the intake side. Not so difficult though. Depends on the ones. If you look on the intake side, it's just pull and grab and pull, it's quite easy. So that's what it is. Okay, if you look where they were the boats. Each bolt that we're holding the cylinder head to the block, there are washers. We need to remove them with a magnet. Okay, that's very important because we're gonna send the cylinder head for cleaning. So with the water pressure and all, it's just gonna pop off and go everywhere, all around the place. So for now, the best way to store them will be besides the valve. We're gonna go. This is the intake side, so I'm gonna put. Uh, this is the side of cylinder six. So I'm going to put them beside the valve with the right numbers. In fact, it's uh, slightly, anyway, in the right order, we're going to figure it out because I think there's more than there are really uh, cylinders. So I'm going to remove all of those. They're right here. The uh, exhaust side, same thing, they're here. So that's what I'm doing now. Okay, we will uh, have to remove also the sensors. So we will remove this uh, coolant sensor. Uh, I'm saying coolant, but I'm not sure. Maybe it's the oil pressure switch. Anyways, we gotta take this sensor out. There's also two, we can see them here inside the head. These are the camshaft, there's two. But we remove them from the this side here. There's one bolt here. It's one of these uh, Torx female socket, the E socket we have to take out. And this one too. We gotta have to make sure where these goes, we wanna put them exactly where they were. So the intake will go on the intake side, the exhaust will go on the exhaust side. So I'm gonna also put a white tape on it and uh, write I or E to uh, identify them accordingly. We're gonna have to remove this o-ring here and just make a round trip around the head, make sure we don't forget anything. Okay, so the way you do that, you just push with your thumb and you rock it gentle and the sensor will just go out. So we'll just tag them on the connector side.